Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to all. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, my name is Sunny Chong from Singapore. So, uh, we are from Sunny Chong Singapore Training School. So, today, uh, we're honored to be here to give you one hour of tips about how to get a reliable job all the time. Right? How we trainers, what is the secret? How we trainers get our job to be reliable all the time. Yeah? So together with me today, we have a prepared for you. Uh, our head trainer, Mr. Alan. Alan's from the Philippines. Yay! Right. Okay. So together we have uh, two dogs here with us. As you can see, these are the very, very popular breeds that you see nowadays in Singapore. Uh, these are the golden noodle. Golden noodle or uh, cross between uh, golden retriever and noodle. Yeah. So, yes. so they have fish. Look of a golden retriever, the size of a golden retriever, and the best thing is it doesn't share. Yeah. So both of them is about three three years old, yes, and they are still undergoing training. If you wonder why some dogs they are so attentive, but some you keep teaching and teaching, but they don't listen to you. Either they are so distracted or you just cannot get attention. Yeah. And then we start to play the dog, the stupid dog. Yeah. Actually, no, it's not like that. Yeah. So, to have a good obedience dog, we always put on two angles the dog yourself and also the handle. Right. So, training plays a very important part. Now, let's have a, a very short demonstration of handling. A normal walking, if you just walk a dog, they don't really want to be You see, they have no life. They have no life. Oh, another boring. Okay. But as you keep walking and walking, you go there, oh, see my dog is so, uh, you cannot get attention, you know, it's not, it's not walking with me, he's talking on other things. He's not actually focusing on the owners, and he chase after the dog, chase after the cat, chase after the birds, except listening to the owner. And he put the leash so hard. Yeah. So training does play an important part. So how do we do this? So first, for training, we always like to have some kind of tools. Okay, let's take a look at the trainers. Take the Yeah. Okay. So over here, we use the most basic collar, which is on the neck. Okay, the collar. It's just a very simple collar around the neck. Yes. Right. This is the first thing that we need to have. Now, when we put a collar on, it should be comfortable. Cannot be too loose because it will come off. Or it cannot be too tight and it not feel very uncomfortable. Yeah? So, so what is the correct tightness? So usually when you put the powers on, you check with your fingers. This at the trainer, it should be about two finger space. Right? If you have three finger space, well it's a little bit loose, but it's still okay. But if you can put four fingers to even your whole five fingers can go through, chances are your collar will come off. Alright? So the guidelines is about two to three fingers space diameter. Alright, like that. That's for what that's for what Ellen is showing you. Alright, now the next two we need is what we call the leash. Alright, a simple leash will go to a flat leash. What what trainer Ellen is using is a flat leash? So look at this, every leash right at the end, you realize that there's a loop. There's always a loop. So I do wonder why is this loop for? Alright, this loop is not for you to wrap around your hand. This is gone. But if you have a big and strong dog, you pull it with the fall and it cannot be missed. Alright, so what is the correct way? The correct way is that you will put your right hand right up in. Hold the line to the comfortable length you want. And that hand control your dog. And dog is always on your left. Alright? So always put your dog in this position. So after a while, your dog understands every time I should always stay on my owner's left side. You must tell your dog what you want. Yeah, if, 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 not, if not, they don't know where to go. Yeah, so all these have to be properly complicated. So it's a lot of conditioning work. So every time you put your dog on your left, you can put on your left. Yeah, put your left, you can put your left. Okay? okay? So this is what you can do. Ever wonder why? Why is it left side? Why not right side? Why? Any good guess? Any good guess? Any 
And you could guess why it's always going to the left, why it's going to the right. Right? Okay, let me give you the answer, yeah. Okay, now, the first reason is that there must be some standardization. Alright, because in future, if your work goes into higher learning, you have a command, you need to know where. So, international standards, we put our dog on the left side. Now, the second reason why the dog is going to the left, because in in under normal traffic condition, your, if you follow the direction of the traffic, the top is always at the inside. So this reduces the chances of the top jumping on the road. Alright, so it's always on the left. So in this position, you bring your dog for a walk. Let's have a walk at it. Alright, so for a start, right, you realize that your dog may turn go to the left, go to the right, in between, and then they, they, they entangle with you and things like that. That's because it doesn't know how, where, where to go. So, with a few practice, you keep on repeating this action so he knows. Yeah? Take a look at, look at Braxton. Braxton is a dog, yeah? He's a dog. And then he's a trainer. So, look at, take a look at Braxton. He's happy walking. But initially, he's not like that. Initially, he will go all over the place. Alright? So if you keep walking like that, you are not able to jazz up the energy. Let's have a little change. Of, if you realize that a little change is just for example, the body language. You see, and then you see what happens to the dog, the whole energy level goes up too. And it becomes so excited, the attention suddenly changes. He so wants to work with you. You see a big difference? So if you go to the normal phase again, and I think you see the whole thing slow down again. Right. So one of the one of the secrets that we trainers have to do is what is what we call we keep engaging the dog. When we keep engaging, the dog becomes interested. Yeah. You know, oh, what is this guy trying to do? Oh, what is what? How come he has so much sound and fun and things like that? Yeah. So you're able to bring up that that that, that attention. You're able to bring up that little extra things that your dog wants to work with you. Yes. So just pay attention to back. Okay, good. Down, down, down. Good. Yep. So you see the big difference? Yep. Uh, just a little change of the body language. The entire atmosphere change. We are able to bring up that, that life. Yeah. You also pay attention to the dog. You notice what happened to the head. You see the head tilt up. And keep looking at the owners. Yep. Very good. So you see the big difference? Yep. Uh, just a little change of the body language. The entire atmosphere change. We are able to bring up the lines. Yeah. All right. Pay attention to the Okay, now you take a look at Braxton. Yeah, you look at the head. He's constantly tilting up and look at the trainer, why? All right, firstly is that uh, there is what we call, you know, he's able to bring up that, that extra bit that your dog is interested. Dogs like to, they like to work, but you have to create that. You have, you have to create the atmosphere. You got to create why, why the dog want to work with you. All right, okay? So first, you must make the sessions interesting. Right, you need to build up this bond. You need to build up these sessions together. Right? So that you see, even the tail, look at the tail. The tail is wagging high up. What does that show? That shows your dog wants to work. He's looking forward. All right? Then, of course, the next secret that we like to use is what we call a reward, a treat. Notice that on the, on the waist of the trainer, there is always what we call a treat pouch. And the treat pouch contain, contains all the treats all right so you see why is he looking up okay let's see again so before we go even further there is a trick of okay hold on down down good all right there is a trick in three things now when we treat our dog right we always treat from the top look at the trainer he treat from the top all right, he gave the treat from the top. All right, we don't give from the from the bottom. No, this is wrong. All right, this is wrong. 
Why? Because we want our dog to go for the treat. We show, he goes and take it. Yeah. So this is what we call, we engage the dog again. We keep engaging the dog. See, he shows and he comes in for the treats. All right. So remember, is to treat from the top. We treat again from the top. And we treat from the, if you notice, we treat from the right hand. Why? Because it's very smooth. You just have to go and show. Imagine you're giving from the left hand, it goes this way. It looks so weird. So it's this way. Yeah. So you always take the reward and you treat from the right hand. So if your dog jumps, nothing. Yep. So what you want, we go into the sit position is what we want, we reward. Okay. So with this concept in mind, let's have a little walk. Yeah, we walk. And then as we walk, right, we pick up a treat and we give to engage the dog. We engage. And then combining with your body language, you know, you make the whole session so, it's so interesting, right? The cat is no more important, all right? The birds is no more, are no more important. Yep, it's the, it's the trainer, the session is so fun. He wants to work with you. See, you get up, you bring up the energy level in the dock. At the same time, you bring up the attention. See, this is what, how we engage. And the dog look forward to this kind of sessions together. Sometimes you can change your speed as well. Yep, see, wow. See, this dog, Breston, is so interested to work with Ellen. Yeah, very good. You notice the head, right? what happened? The head keep tilting up and look. Yep. Yes. So you need to build up this momentum. So as you walk, you give the treat. You walk, you give the treat again. Yep. So you want to build up this momentum of your dog wants to look at you. And the minute he looks at you, what happened? You reward back again. Why? Because you want to shape this behavior. The behavior of looking at the handler. So when he looks at you, he gets the reward. What happened? He keep one one to look at you. Because the minute he looks, he has a reward. So he wants to keep working. Yep. So if you build up this pattern, you build up this momentum, your dog is always focusing on you. That will make working and training so much, so much easier. Yep, notice? Yeah, just pay attention to the handler, how he handles. Yep. You notice that the left hand never let go. He is always holding on to the leash. Yep, that's where you get the constant control of your dog. At the same time, take a look at his body language. Yes, he changed his pace. Yep. He built up the atmosphere. Yep. At the same time, the reward keep coming. And the whole atmosphere becomes good. It becomes, it's so fun. Yep. It's so fun to work together. Yeah. Notice that I have another dog here. Yep. Usually, this will be a big distraction for Braxton. See, he's totally not, not interested in me and the dog at all. You have the whole attention is always on the handler. So this is what we call, you need to engage your dog all the time. All right. So you can play with the speed as well. Sometimes you slow down, sometimes you go a little faster, suddenly you go to a slowing down, very slow motion. So your dog, oh, what, what, what's he doing? What's he doing? So he's always looking. Oh, how come the, my owner slow down? Oh, he's picking up his speed again. Oh, how come his normal speed again? So constantly he's engaging. Yep. So you see? Yeah, and look at, look at the tail. Constantly the tail is wagging. So he is very happy to work. And he love it. Yeah, see? Okay, so keep working on this. Then if you think that, oh, maybe I want to test and see how the dog goes. So I will put, sometimes you can put a distraction, sit, sit. Okay, stay, stay, yep. You can put a distraction, yep. Okay, 
you can put a distraction with you or you can you know anything that will cause a distraction at the same time you continue to engage your dog you notice right see look at Braxton he continued to be focusing on the handler okay let me see there are some questions please teach about the connection between dog and the other dog sometimes i don't understand why they are fighting all right okay this thing is about uh, it's a little if i use a no the question is that why some dogs they are not friendly why they fight all right and then why they growl at each other so it's, if i use human being as an example maybe you can understand better right it's just like between me and another person we have our comfort level we have our comfort zone if we talk to each other at a distance at a comfort distance away the person feels very comfortable to chat but if i go nearer and nearer and nearer the person to a point he may feel uh, i think it's a bit too near so it's the same for dogs right they also have their discomfort zone around them we call it the invincible circle it's a comfort zone that's around them some of the dogs right this zone is very big it's so big that they can't even go near some dogs then they are very sociable the circle is very small so they can go closer to each other to the point of even the the, the invisible circle they intercept they are still okay so our aim as a handler is to continue to socialize our dog to train our dog to be able to reduce this comfort zone this 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 invisible circle small so small enough that they can go closer and closer and finally they are so sociable to each other yep so it's our job as an owner to teach this 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 dog to be able to be comfortable with each other and achieving a very small this invisible circle so that the comfort zone they, they can able to approach and become closer to each other and to the point of they can play with each other all right i hope i've understand your questions yes my dog has separation anxiety and fear of thunder what to do ah okay this is another very common question now separation anxiety think about it why why separation anxiety right that's because it's created by who it's actually created by the owner you have spent too much time too much time on with each other yep so your dog the whole the whole brain right is keep thinking about you you and owner and own every day he think about the owner but nothing else so what you need to do so the 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 the, the word already tell you separation anxiety so how you need to introduce things you need to introduce image you need to introduce things i mean as uh, more scenarios more friends that your dog have so that the little brain right they have they contain more information more friends and then they dream they run i'm sure you see before the leg will, will go and then they learn you're introducing more and more things into the head so that right this 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 database that your dog has right is not only on the owners so you need to give your dog more things give your dog a job right sometimes you bring your dog to the cafe sometimes you put them into some training school sometimes you go to daycare sending for grooming yep so you introduce more and more different different lifestyle every day so he get used to this all right so you need to in short time out between you and the dog all right so as he goes along then he will think of some other things yep then the, this will slowly slowly improve it will not be over one day be over a period of time as you keep doing right they were slowly accepting more and more friends and this separation anxiety will be improved yep okay let's go back to the training again yep okay if you have been watching we are what we are doing is that uh, now we are giving you some tips on how we engage our dog always yep why the dog is no notice about braxton braxton is our golden doodle for today so why why braxton is always constantly look at the attention by right right braxton should be focusing on another dog or this studio or, or or anything else that will cause distraction but look at look at braxton the attention is always on the handler so how do we do this engagement so we use our body language 
we use the treats, we use our praise to create this atmosphere, to create this environment that is a good learning environment that he looks forward to it. All right, let's try again. And we go. Yeah. Actually, all you need to do is you vary a little bit. Yeah, make the in, make the session interesting. Down. Down. Hey. Make the session interesting. Yeah. By change of speed. Some food. Slow down the pace. Yep. So your dogs become so keen. Yeah. Again, this kind of thing, there is no magic. It, it won't happen over just one day, right? It's a continuous, continuous effort that your dog just becomes obedience. All right. Actually, if you think about it, right, dog training is about teamwork. It's between you and the dog. Two of you have to work together as a team. Hey, come in. Good. All right. You have to work together as a team, right? So how to be a team? A team means that you need to spend time together. You must understand each other. Then you will see that, well, it makes a good companion together. All right. So this is the basic concept of engaging your dog. With this concept in mind, you can do wonders. All right. Trust me, you can do wonders. I can show you some of the tricks and some of the things that within like a short period of time, he can get it. Okay, now, when we walk our dog, right, there is always a command. Your dog must understand some words. It's just like when we talk, I tell you, let's go uh, walking. You understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, but the dog, right, you also need, they must understand some words. So, and the words, right, there are some recommended words, but of course, if you want to use your own words, there's a trick again, right? Don't use statement, a long statement. Your dog don't understand right don't have to tell your dog come on let's go walking your dog don't understand what you are trying to say what you want to say is just one word one syllabus like for example heel which is commonly used let's try and you always want to another trick yeah another trick you always walk off from your left foot the leg closest to your dog why because he can see a movement at the same time you give a command heel and he goes Try, try on your own. You will know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's another, another trick that we like to do, especially for a very new dog. Yep. So you put your dog into a stationary position, take out a treat. The minute you take off from the left foot, give a command heel and you give a reward. And you go again. Yep. See? So he looks forward to the word. Yep. You get a treat in your, again, reward from the right hand. Have a treat in your hand. Take off from the left foot, command, heel, and you go again. Yeah. See? And your dog look forward to it. See? Yeah. So after a few practice, and practice, and practice, you can just try and walk off from the left foot. He walks with you. Yes. If that doesn't work, well, just go back again. Yep. So this is what we call engaging. We keep engaging the dog. See? So let's try again and heal. That's good. Yep. So after when you walk off, right? Then the same thing about changing your speed, your body language, all comes back again. Yeah. And your dog likes to work one more time. Yeah. Very good. Very nice. So let's take a look. Any other? What's the next question? Okay, dog is afraid of stranger. Example, I hire groomer to groom him at home, but he's afraid hide in bathroom. So I should be more intense to get him out and let groom bath him. Did I do wrong? What should I do to amend it? Okay, so come back to these questions about dog is afraid. Now, the thing is that first, to, to, to bring a hair dryer, your dog freak out, correct? Right? To have a water that onto the dog, you freak out again. Right? All these things you need to introduce gradually. All right? And the owners play an important part. Why? Because, come on, dogs who trust who, he trust the owner the most. Right? So you have to show your dog that 
is safe. Yep. So you can do things like, for example, okay, let's see with my dog here. Yeah, let's see. We just focus on this dog. Yes. So when it's a puppy, we should be able to engage this dog. Sometimes we fed. Sometimes we can open the mouth. We check the teeth. Sometimes we clean the ears and things like that. Yep. So what I'm trying to do, same thing, we engage the dog. We let the dog get used to being touched. Right? I'm sure you hear people saying that, uh, you know, my dog, uh, once I touch the paw, uh, he's going to bite me. So I touch the backside, uh, he also he will bite me. Certain area cannot touch. Right? No, actually what you should be doing is, at puppy stage, right, you should be able to engage. You should be able to hold the paw. Sometimes you just hold the paw, touch the nails. Yeah? Yeah, you can flip your dog, lift him up. Yes, sometimes you just have to feel a little bit here, there. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to condition this dog to be able to accept yeah, and have confidence that I'm not hurting him. Yes, he knows that it's all a part and parcel of a living, right? staying with the owner. What we're trying to hear, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to introduce a dog into city life. We're trying to make this dog to be part of us, part of our human lifestyles. Yeah, they are not a dog on the street that doesn't shower, right? They cannot be approached. Yes, so you need to slowly introduce all this conditioning work. Yeah, okay. All right, let's take a look at uh, what kind of treats do you recommend for toy dogs? All right, now uh, there's lots and lots of treats in the market. What's important is you have to understand what is the logic of a treat, right? Treats already, the term already tell you is to reward a dog for a behavior that you want, all right? So it has to be used for a rewarding basis, all right? So you don't, you don't just watch, watching TV and you keep giving and giving and giving. So that lose that, that incentive of the meaning of a treat, right? Because it is used to shape a behavior that you want. Like for example, if I want this dog to be going on to the day bed, so I bring my dog to the day bed. Oops, sorry. So I bring this dog to the day bed. When he goes up, I will have a reward. Yep. So after a few tries, this dog also understand that to go to the day bed, which is a behavior that I want, he will get a reward in returns. Yep. So let's try again. All right. So let's, since we are on the topic of treats, let me show you what is the purpose of a treat. Now, okay, let's say we want to do this thing about shaping this behavior of asking the dog to go on to the day bed. All right. So treats, how do we use treats properly? So again, treats has to be what we call small. All right. So if you see treats, right, we like to make it very small. All right. So small that they look forward to the next treats. It cannot be a big chunk where it loses its effectiveness. So it has to be small. All right. Okay, now back into the behavior of sending this dog onto the day bed. So to your dog, he doesn't know that you want this dog to go to the day bed. So how? So first, you have a leash and you have a treat. You lure your dog to the bed. And then you give. All right, you keep repeating this action. So the topic here is how do you effectively use the treat? And you give again. All right, just try again. Yep. So you keep on luring with the, with the leash and the treat. Once he goes on the bed, you give again. All right. So after a while of keep doing this, right, you realize that your usage of the leash is less and less. In fact, you will realize your dog start to be able to walk up to the bed themselves. Because they also know that once they get up to the bed, they had a reward in return. So you keep showing this. 
and it keeps showing. So after a while, you can drop the line. You can drop the leash. Realize trainer Alan, he's showing. He dropped the leash, he show. And he give again. Yep. So we keep on repeating this action. And then he fall a bit short. Notice his position is here. In a while, his position will be here. All right, let's see. So once he reach here, he show. Yep. So you give again. Yep. So they becomes, oh, when I go to the day bit, when I go to this platform here, I will receive something. And if you like to, in this instance, Alan used the word place. Yeah, it's just a command that we use to bring a dog onto something. Yep. Good. So then we can try after a while, right? You can try at a distance away, maybe at two steps away. You hold on to your dog, maybe about somewhere there. And from here, you show, you, you keep on prompting your dog to go to the day bed. If he goes, great. Oops. And you give. And you give. Yeah. So you go at a distance again. Bring up, bring that to you. So from here, you keep on directing this stock to go to the, the, the target. It goes up. He catched it. Very good. So he goes up. He gets it again. Right? So after a while, this dog also understand. Yeah, you see, you must be effectively using the treats. So it's not about this, this treat, uh, my dog don't like. So you keep on going around looking for treats. No, it's about controlling the treats. Yep. And you only reward for a behavior you want. Uh, it can be a lot of different behavior. It can be that uh, every time you come home, he will sit by the sofa, just sit on the floor and wait for you. If he goes to the position, you give a reward. It can be every time you want to go out of your house, your dog will go to a certain position and stay there and wait for you to put the leash on. Yep. So you can reward for certain behavior that you want. Yep. So if this instant is more of like a, Yep, sending a dog to a, 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 a platform. Yep. So sometimes, again, you want to make it reliable, you can use distraction again. Sit. Sit down. Okay, try and send. So I put a distraction, you see whether it goes or not. Yeah. Okay. So then it becomes reliable. So you can try from different angles also. Sometimes you can go to the other angle and try. Yeah. Very nice. So he sent. All right, so you understand how to use the treat properly. Yes. Dog. What is this? Dog barking will require effective correction. Okay. Let's see any next questions. All right. Can you show the example with an untrained dog? It seems so easy. All right. No, actually, it's all about patience. It's all about using the right technique. Like for example, okay, let's switch another dog already. Uh, let's see what can we do. Yes. So, okay, is there any other things that we can show that uh, they can do? All right, okay, now let's, 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 let's show about this. Uh. Okay, put, put your dog up here. Now, there's this thing called what we call uh, distance control. Yep. So you put a dog at this position, you use your hand and signal, and your dog go to a position. Now, for example, this, this dog is in a sit position. We want our dog to go to a down position. You take a reward. 
you go to the dog, you show, you bring to the ground, and you give a command, down. Yeah. And then you give. Yeah. All right, again, you show from the seat. You show the reward, you bring to the down. Again, from a seat first. You show, and you bring yeah. to the ground, and you give. Yeah. All right, as you think that the dog has become better, you can go a little further. And then you bring up to the seat again. You show the reward and you bring to the ground and command down. And you give again. Yep. It becomes better. You put up to the seat again. And you go even further. Yep. And then you show the down. Down. And you give again. Yep. So you bring up your, your seat again. And you go further, 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 and you ask for the position. Down. So it goes down. Good. See? <clears throat> so what, what I'm trying to demonstrate, yeah, this is something new. So we slowly we keep showing, showing as it becomes better, we go for further distance, and your dog's still responding. Down. And as you respond, this is the behavior that you want exactly. So how? You have to reinforce on it. You have to tell your dog, yeah. correct. That is what I want. So how? You keep on rewarding. Yeah. So with treats, right? It works wonder. All right? You have... Then if you're doing the right behavior, you keep on rewarding and your dog will know. Yep. So as you yeah. practice, it becomes better and better and better. All right? Now, there's a question here. My puppy, six months, always yeah. get angry and wants to bite whatever touch her nails. Yep. Six months actually is a good age. All right, you have to quickly start it. All right, you have to maybe today you cannot touch the nail, right? Doesn't matter. You start by patting the head. Tomorrow, if you advance slowly a little bit down, then you can pat the leg area. Then sometimes you just play with the paw and slowly you touch the nail. So, yep, you can slowly advance. There must be an effort. When you have this effort, then you will see changes. All right. Now, keeping your dog, right? Dog is what we call a pack animal. All right? So what is pack animal? Pack animal means they actually travel in a group. And in a pack, right, there is always what we call the leader. And in the dog training circle, we call it the pack leader. Pack leader means the, the, own, the, the, the boss, or what we term as the Lion King, as you see in the, in the cartoon, right? The Lion King. So there's always this king that governs the entire pack. And all the, dog, all, the, all the members in this pack, right, they will look upon this leader and they know that, oh, I better follow the rule and orders. Or they will be, they'll be taught a lesson. All right? So when this dog, right, being a pack kind of animals, they go to your home. So what happened? They will look for this pack. Where is my pack? And what do you think? Yeah. Actually, he made your family... Your, your husband, your wife, your kid, the family is a pack, including the dog. From the point, from the dog's point of view, right, you are a pack, right? So then you look for the leader, right? Usually the, the daddy is always the leader because he's very firm, good voice, sit, no. Yep, so he learns. Yep, then what happened? The kids, right, usually they appear as either they are weak or they are the same rank. So what happened? You will realize the dogs, right, will always take advantage and they will claw on them, they climb on them, sometimes they bite and all these things. Yeah. So what is the, so the, the, the task of the family is to make your dog understand they are the dog. We are the leader. We are the, we are the Lion King. So they will learn how to follow. The greatest problem comes when there is too much giving in to your dog. And they think that they are the leader. When they think they are the leader, then you are in trouble because they are the Lion King now. You are the members. And that's where you get into trouble. Yep. So always teach your dog to make them understand that they are, they are the followers because they like to have a leader. All dogs like to have a leader, just like we. Human beings, we also like to have a leader. We like to have somebody that we look upon that can lead us to certain the yeah. right path, to do the right things. So the dog's the same. They want this. So they want you to lead. 
All right. So lead, show your dog you are the leader. The dog is the follower. And you have to make sure the family members are ranked above the dog because there'll be hierarchy, right? So you make sure that this dog is ranked below, right? And the families are the, 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 in the higher hierarchy, right? They are the leaders. Then things will be okay. All right? Okay? In training, we always believe three things. We always want to exercise our dog a lot. Exercise, right? Why exercise? Exercise, we will make sure your dog energy level is very constant. Yep, when they are very constant, it's easy to work. It's just like us. When we go exercise, we go running, yeah, we have our good diet, we tend to be stronger, we are more alert, and we, we, we listen to things, we can focus better. Yep, exercise. After exercise, next thing is what? Discipline. All right? Discipline your dog. Teach your dog what you want. Teach your dog what is the rules, what, can, what you like, so he knows how to keep doing to get the reward. Teach your dog what you don't like, so he don't want to repeat because he cannot. When he, when he, can he perform this behavior that you don't like, he will get, oh, I don't have my treats. All right? So you have to know how to uh, discipline your dog. All right? Then finally, then we talk about affection. Affection means what? Love and kisses and all these things. Right? But the problem with us is a lot of time, right? We always started off with affection. Then after that, affection. After that, affection again. Yeah. So everything go crazy. Yeah, because your dog, oh, you don't understand law and orders. That's where everything is trouble. Yeah? Okay? Remember this. All right, let's see. Hello, what is the most effective way to calm dog doing fireworks? Thank you. Wow. Okay, so fireworks is a little bit similar to in Singapore, right? We term as what? Thunder, thunder, thunderstorm, lightning, thunder, you see? We always hear people, oh, my dog go hide under the bed, it gets shiver and all these things. So what happened is that we need to teach our dog that this is okay. It's part and parcel of a life. So how? At the school, at our school, what we do is we actually introduce sound. So we all started off with maybe clapping sound, we got used to it. Then we start off with uh, maybe drum roll. Yep. And as you get along with it, then we introduce uh, sound using the uh, radio. And then slowly we introduce thunder louder and louder. This is what we call conditioning work. So to the point that you just get used to it. All right. So one of the way we like to do also is to play a soft music. Sometimes you play rainforest music at the background. Let him get used to once in a while there is thunderstorm. Yep. So get used to this. Yep. Okay. It's all about training and conditioning work. Okay. Why does further distance make it harder for a dog to obey? Of course. Yeah. It's like if you're nearer, first you have a leash. Yeah. With a leash, you are easier to control your dog. When you go further, your dog understands you are further away. When you're further away, they also understand that they have more chances, more options to do things that they want to do. The minute you let go of this leash, there is a, a, a loss in the connection. And they know that freedom, that's why they lost control. Yeah. So in order to reach the off leash, you need to be good on the line first. Then we move on to the off leash. Yes? Okay? How do you tell your dog that his action is not correct. Okay, now the thing about this, about this thing about you want to tell your dog that this behavior is not what you like. All right, then you have to introduce what we call a negative reinforcement. So, what is negative reinforcement? Negative reinforcement it varies from example. You can use your voice. All right, no. Yep. So. Your dog understand because of the harsh tone, right? Imagine your nose sounds like, no, no. He thinks that you are playing. He'll, he'll look at you, probably he'll whack a tail as well. So it's your voice. So if your voice is, hey, no. See? Or you say, oh shit, something is wrong. So the tone, yeah? Negative reinforcement. Yeah, that is one of the way. All right? You can also tell the no. Because why? This is a sensitive spot. Okay, no. No. 
then don't just know if your dog stop the behavior that you don't like then that's what you want right then you have to what we call reward back right so what do you want right if for example when your dog comes to you, he jump then you know no 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 then your dog don't jump then then don't just stop there then what do you want do you want your dog to sit when you comes to you or give you a hand or what so you teach your dog every time he comes to you you bring your dog to the seat the minute your dog sit 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 and you reward good boy good boy yep so don't just teach your dog negative reinforcement you have to teach your dog also so what you like yeah so discourage a behavior that you don't like and don't forget to encourage a behavior that you like okay right so it all always work like that yeah let's come back to Alan again wow the time passed so fast <laughs> it's really fast yeah Alan yeah too fast you want to show up maybe you can show up a little bit what your dog can do yeah so this dog right uh, has been training with us uh, Shaylen right has been training with us for a while so he's in the office class now Shaylen. Okay, notice with a command the dog goes to the left side of the handler okay ever wonder why it's all about teaching you can carry on and i just explain yep so ever wonder why why the dog know exactly where to go yeah it's all about on leash first you teach your dog to be there then finally you go into the off leash see he knows yep remember at the beginning of our show we talk about we talk about yep uh, uh we talk about on the leash on the collar and you teach your dog how to heal and all these things so as we go along we show and show and show so he knows exactly where to go yeah so he knows see he knows exactly where you want him to go so it's, it's all about repeating yep he can also halfway through he can put the dog to a seat and he can walk past again and stay he can go yeah see all right he knows yeah so nice right when your dog can be trained off leash yeah very good yeah. right so all this thing is possible it's all possible yeah at the school we train many dogs to be like that to be off leash and they can be useful you know in the house yeah and we enjoy their companion for many many years Yeah. 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 See, so all is all about controlling reward for the behavior you want. Yeah, make a correction on the behavior you don't want, and constantly engaging with your body language with a reward yep so he knows all dogs work for reward no dog work for punishment yeah, all right they work for your that extra bits of reward that they want they work for your love all right but to 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 do that you yeah. must tell your dog you must teach your dog what must what must they do what must they carry out to get your love to get your reward so all this thing has to be properly conveyed across and they understand so they know how to team with you it's all about teamwork both of you is a team together a companion your best buddy yep so to be in order to be a best buddy just like your friends you need to spend time together yeah you need to go out you need to play basketball together same thing for your dog you need to spend time you need to teach this dog yep how to be your buddy yeah that's yeah. nice yep very good yeah. okay just sit okay, give me a second yeah
Yep. Good. That's good. good. All right. Okay. Come, Ellen. Yep. So, okay. So, time's really far. Fly and it's so fast. It's almost to the end already. Thank you for your uh, one hour together with us. I hope we have given you some good tips and uh, how to engage your dog better and how to work closer with your dogs better. All right. If you have any questions, you can always uh, look us up. Sunny Chong Dog Training School. Let me repeat again. Sunny Chong Dog Training School, Singapore. Yep. Uh, last, uh, we also like to thank Mas for this live sessions uh, of sharing some of the dog tips together with you. So uh, uh, me and Alan, we'd like to thank everybody and see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.